Praise the Lord. Today we're looking at the part two of bitter relationships, toxic relationships. Bitter relationships, toxic relationships. It is bitter relationships that birth or produces toxic relationships. When our relationships become bitter, it poisons the relationship and it makes it toxic. These are things that we can't compromise. And these are things that are facts on the ground. So that is why God will want us never to allow our relationships to go bitter. So that we will not suffer toxic relationships. May the Lord God help us as we go into his word. And may we be delivered in our homes, in our workplaces among our colleagues and any place where we find ourselves relating, that God will deliver us from bitter relationships that gives birth to toxic relationships. We thank you for answer prayer. Amen. We read Colossians chapter 3, verses 18 to 25. That is what we read. And we said in verse 18 that when we flood the commands, of God will contaminate beautiful and wonderful relationships. So Paul was addressing wives as to how they ought to live in order to cause bitterness at home, to generate bitterness against their husbands and bitterness against their children and bitterness in the family as a whole. So Paul was reminding the wives to walk as per the stated commands of God. When every wife knows her place, the place of submission, which is a place of her power, the place where she can launch her launching pad or power, no woman, no wife want to flout that command of God. When we flout the command, then we take away the beauty and we take away the glory of the relationship and make it bitter. Today, we are starting with verse 19. In verse 19, Paul now began to speak to the men. And he said to the men to love their wives and never allow their hearts to be bitter against them. So what is the principle? The command to love is a command to cover the multitude of offenses. The Bible says that love covereth. The multitude of sins. The word sin is also offense, hurt, pain, that which could trigger bitterness. So God wants we men, we husbands, to love our wives. And once we follow the command to love, then the command to cover the multitude of the errors, of the offenses, of the shortcomings, of the weaknesses of our wives or our spouses will become an easy thing to do. Proverbs chapter 10 verse 12 and Proverbs 17 verse 9. Proverbs 10, 12 and 17 verse 9. The Bible says that those who want to love will overlook transgression. Those who desire to love will overlook transgression. And those who love will cover the multitude of sin. There are five things I want us to consider under verse 19. The command to love. Is the command to cover the multitude of offenses. Love is the antidote to all toxic relationships. It doesn't matter how toxic the relationship is. Once we apply the love tonic, once we bring the love of God into the situation, we will change the dynamics of that relationship. Number two, a husband's real power in a relationship is loving just like Christ. Let me repeat that. A husband's real power in relationship is loving like Christ did. Ephesians 5, verses 22 to 23. It says, we husbands, we must love our wives like Christ loved the church. To the extent of dying for the church is a huge task. It's a huge call. It's a huge command. It's a huge Obligation 
is a huge responsibility. Loving your wife to the point of dying for her is a very huge thing. So may God give we husbands the grace of God we need. That we need to love like Christ will love or usually love the church. The third thing that I see, the lack of submission is one of the things men dislike. Lack of submission is an offense to your husband. That is why God, through Paul, emphasized that a woman must submit to her husband. Very important. Because lack of submission are the, one of the triggers to bitterness and toxic relationships. When a woman feels she's in charge, when she feels she's the boss, when she feels she's the head, you are causing offense. And that could lead to bitter relationship. And that can cause toxic or toxicity in your relationship. Men get offended when they feel that their wives are not submitting, but they are usurping. Love is a heavy weight that calls for natural submission. In other words, when you love your wife, the love power, the weight of the love of God is so heavy that anybody who comes under it will submit naturally. So God knowing what we have as men and the power of love, he said, we husbands, you husbands, love your wives. Love your wives and the submission will happen because love is a heavy weight. Love is like a heavy metal. It will bring people to submit naturally without forcing them. Love tonic builds our immunity against relationship toxins. Love tonic builds our immunity against relationship toxins. So we men, we husbands, our job, our duty, our focus is to love our wives. Full stop. Wives, women, your job or your the, the thing that God requires of you is to submit your husband. Full stop. Let everybody be in your lane. If God says I should love, let love be my concentration. If God says my wife should submit, let that be a concentration. And we should not be cross carpeting into looking at who is loving, who is not submitting, and all that. Let us focus on what we have been called to do by God. And when this happens, we will have a beautiful, wonderful relationship. And we will flush out the toxins that are not meant to be there. The next point is verses 20 to 21. Verses 20 to 21. Bitter relationships produces toxic and dysfunctional families. In verses 20 to 21, Paul admonished fathers and admonished children. He spoke to the children first, obey your fathers or your parents. For this is pleasing to God and is fitting to him. Then Paul spoke to the fathers, said, do not provoke your children to anger. We can provoke our children to good works and to loving God and excelling, but never provoke them. The word to provoke them to anger is to break their spirit. You can't look at your child and say you are a failure. You can't make it. You can't look at your child and say you are a failure. You are you not amount to anything. It cannot be. That's what Paul is saying. That's not what Paul is saying. Don't break their spirit. Paul is not saying that when your children misbehave, you shouldn't correct them. Sometimes correction will be angry with you. That's fine. But we should not provoke them into anger by breaking their spirit and make them feel useless. No father, no mother want to do that. Bitter relationships produces toxic and dysfunctional families. When our relationships are toxic, when our relationships are bitter, it trickles down to our children. It trickles down to everybody. And everybody will be affected. Everybody will be impacted. You may not know what you are doing as a wife or a husband, but you are sending the wrong weapons of mass destruction against your children and against your family. Hallelujah. We must not discourage our children. Because the Bible says if we do that, they become discouraged. We have to be encouraging them, emboldening them, giving them 
courage, giving them boldness, making sure they believe in God and they believe in themselves and they believe in what they can do. We should not fight their DNA. We should not challenge their identity. We must rather embolden them in, in the Lord and in the Word and make sure we help them develop a strong identity in Christ. That's what fathers are supposed to do. There is anger in everybody, you. There is anger in everybody. Everybody can be angry. Even the calmest and the coolest and the meekest person mentioned in the Bible, Moses. When he became angry, his anger stopped him from making progress. So there's anger in everybody. When anger is properly harnessed, it can birth transformation. But when anger goes wrong, it challenges everything that we have built and prepared ourselves for. Verse 22. Toxic or bitter relationships, when it's unchecked, destroys productivity. So bitter relationships, toxic relationships, unchecked, destroys productivity. Now Paul now began to talk about servants and their masters. So now I took the issue of bitterness and bitter relationship, toxic relationship to the marketplace. When you are bitter against your boss, how can you become productive? When a boss is bitter against the people that work with him or her, how can there be productivity? The work will suffer. The vision will not be achieved. The goals and the targets will not be met because there is bitterness in the place. That is why most organizations, they don't employ both husband and wife. So they will not bring their bitter fights, their worries, their challenges to their job, the, the workplace. So the work will not suffer. But when relationships become bitter and relationship becomes toxic, it can challenge productivity. Say, servants, obey your masters in all things. Do not be pretenders or man pleasers. When things become toxic, there's disobedience and disregard for authority, order, and structure and system. When there is bitterness and toxic relationship in the job place, people become pretenders and they become man pleasers because that is what it is. Toxic relationships erode sincerity and singleness of heart. When people are bitter, when people are toxic, they don't become sincere anymore. Everything they do is colored in pretense. Then lastly, under verse 22, toxic relationships eject God out of the system. Verse 23, focusing on God flushes our bitterness and toxics in our relationship. When we focus on God, Paul told the workers, say, when you come to work, understand that whatever you are doing, you are doing it unto the Lord. Paul spoke to the wives. When you submit to your husbands, you are doing it unto the Lord. Paul told the husbands, when you love your wives, you are doing it as unto the Lord. When we focus everything we do, the focus on God flushes out toxics and bitterness in our relationships. We must understand that. Then verse 24, making God our paymaster is a power that conquers bitterness and toxicity in our relationship. When you make God your rewarder, when you make God your paymaster, when I love my wife and my wife does not submit, but I look to God as my paymaster, according to verse 24 of Colossians chapter 3, then I will allow myself to be flushed out of bitterness and toxins. Let everybody makes, make God your paymaster, your rewarder. Love your wife, let God reward you. Submit your husband, let God reward, reward you. Obey your masters and let God reward you. Let us focus on God and make God our paymaster. And this is a power that will conquer bitterness and conquer toxic, toxic relationships. Do everything with joy. Do everything as unto the Lord. Do everything and expect God to be your paymaster. Verse 25, lastly, God will not spare anybody who manufactures bitterness. It doesn't matter who. If you are a husband 
and you are the one promoting bitterness, God will visit you. If you are the wife and you are promoting bitterness, God will visit you. If you are the boss and you are the one promoting bitterness, God will visit you. If you are the worker and you are promoting bitterness, God will visit you. It's, we, the principle is that God will not spare anyone who manufactures bitterness. God will surely pay back those who cause bitterness. And God is not partial, for he will not look at the faces of anybody. May the Lord God himself bless the word. And may God cause us to become men and women whose life will produce sweetness and not bitterness. As we conclude, I pray that God will make you and myself better people, sweet people, pleasant people, where bitterness will not be our portion. The Lord bless you. The Lord cause a change and a transformation in your life. Shambles in glory, Abbey. This is your mega devotional, I mean, breath that we bring to you on a daily basis. I love you. Shalom.